My sister had called me on that Friday night saying that there was a car accident in Corbin City, which is near where I grew up. They had started CPR on a man and they had called her and told her that it was our father. While returning from a chimney fire, I suffered a heart attack behind the wheel of my vehicle, drove off the road, hit two parked cars. The next thing I remember is waking up in the CBU. Medicaid intercepted Ambulance 21 on Tuckahoe Road in the area of Memora, where we began our advanced life support assessments and treatments. And a decision was made to transport the patient to Atlanta Care Regional Medical Center's Mainland Division. Mainland is the only hospital in the region capable of providing emergency cardiac catheterization 24-7. I actually got there first. I live closer to Atlantic Care Mainland than he does, so I had seen the ambulance arrive. They had to restart CPR once while he was in the ER, and then they immediately took him to the cath lab once they got him a little bit more stable to place a stent in his heart because he had 90% blockage in his one coronary artery. Around 10 minutes after I think I finally fell asleep, they had called me again and said things had taken a turn for the worse. They found that his lungs had been severely injured from the CPR, which is expected. They got about two and a half liters of blood out of his chest and they started him on um, a massive blood transfusion protocol. They decided that they were gonna start him on ECMO, which allows the blood to be removed from the body, then taken to a machine which oxygenates it, and then actually returns it to the body. So that was allowing his lungs to get the rest that it needed in order to heal. There were many components to the success of this case. Primarily, the quick response and actions of the fire department volunteers and first responders that initiated patient contact that evening. Their ability to intervene and initiate their training with immediate chest compressions and early defibrillation directly contributed to the success of this case. There was about four or five days where he had stayed on both the ECMO and the Impella. During this time, the nurses were fantastic. They made it a point to come in and explain everything that was going on with my dad. They were very close to me and my sisters. The nurses were real lifesavers. And knowing that the care that I received not only was medical care, but emotional care uh, as well meant the world to me. I think that is part of the reason that I was able to recover as quickly as I did. The medical end of it is one thing, but the emotional and the, the mental end of recovery is the hardest part, at least it was for me. And they made that process so much more pleasant than it could have been. They had called me while I was on my unit and they said, we have somebody who would like to talk to you. And I ran over there and he immediately started crying and I started crying. I said, look at you. And we just hugged and he just held me for a good couple minutes. I never forget, he, the first thing he said was, I'm so sorry. And I said, there's no reason to be sorry. Don't be sorry, I said, we got you. We were so lucky he even was able to wake up from it and be able to talk to us and be able to get into a chair. You know, some people aren't that lucky. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. One of the EMTs in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital was apparently screaming at me the whole way to the hospital, you can't do this, you have to walk Kate down the aisle in a couple of months. About three months later, my dad was able to walk me down the aisle. That was, I think, the biggest reason that I worked so hard to, to get myself better and out of the hospital. To be able to walk my baby girl down the altar to get married to her husband was all the, the impetus I needed to, to get well. It was the best walk I'd ever taken in my whole life. I'm so excited that I'll be able to see him be a grandfather. I know he's going to be an amazing grandfather. He absolutely loves my sisters and I. That's the one thing anybody who talks to him uh, says. They know that he loves us more than anything. Hearing of his return to his family was epic news. As a paramedic, the true reward for our hard work is equated into time. The time we give to our patients and the families of those patients. It's truly indescribable to be able to provide a service like that for others.